you mentioned taking care of both lines. We talked earlier about the Buccaneers likely not being in the J.J. Watt pursuit because they have their own guys that they want to keep, and they've said they will try to keep, if not definitely will keep, and Dominican Sue, one of them, speaking to Albert Breer of SI.com earlier this week. Sue said, my goal is to come back and have an opportunity to go win another championship. Me and Tom Brady spoke the other day about that opportunity, as well as with GM Jason Light. I don't know if you saw our parade celebration on that podium. Coach Bruce Arians said, I'm not going anywhere, and he's usually a man of his word. Again, they can't go sign J.J. Watt. They can't sign whoever else happens to fall out of the sky because they have to keep Sue. They have to keep Shaq Barrett. They have to keep Levante David. They have to keep Chris Godwin. I don't know that they can do that one, but they have to at least try to keep that defense together because they've said these guys are coming back. And it wasn't just some drunken moment. Even if it was, and maybe it was, it's going to resonate with the audience. And those guys are thinking, we're going to get taken care of. We're going to get our reward for helping this team to its first Super Bowl win in 18 years. You know, Mike, as you look at even with the economic downturn with the cap, um, you really have to look at a couple of guys at the wide receiver position, Allen Robinson and Chris Godwin, who I'm not saying they're equal, but I think if they were on the open market, they would get a lot of traffic. And obviously, each team has the ability to use the franchise tag on those players. But the other day, I, was, I, was talk- I just called Bruce Arians about something on Sunday, and um, you know, we were talking, and he believes that they can keep both Shaq Barrett and Chris Godwin. Now, naturally, he's going to say that. But I think that he truly does believe deep down that they can keep both. The problem is, you have to ask yourself, in an environment like this one, okay, think about it. In an environment like, like this one, Shaq Barrett, Chris Godwin are both probably close to 19 or $20 million players per year. And ask yourself this question, particularly if you're going to get team-friendly deals from both Gronk and Antonio Brown, okay? Who do you keep if you have a choice? Shaq Barrett or Chris Godwin? And I ask you that question, Mike Florio. Tell me. Oh, you keep Shaq Barrett without question. And then when Godwin leaves and people say, well, I, I thought you were going to keep Godwin, all Arians has to say is he wanted too much. We tried. He wanted too much. We couldn't do it. And, and you just shrug and you move on. But I, I don't know why they would even try to keep Chris Godwin when you consider someone is going to come along, presumably. In a, in a different year, I'd say absolutely someone's going to come along and throw a premium at Chris Godwin just to rip him away from the Buccaneers. But this year, I don't know, maybe it won't be a premium because maybe they'll look at it and say, I, you know, our money is better spent elsewhere. But if they've got Antonio Brown who will most likely come back unless Russell Wilson really rattles cages in Seattle to get them to make a run at Brown because that's a guy that Russell wanted last year. Miller and Tyler Johnson, they still have Mike Evans. I I just think that Godwin becomes a luxury you shouldn't even try to afford because it is going to affect your ability to keep key defensive pieces in place. So without question, I'd keep Shaq Barrett over Chris Godwin, Peter. Well, you mentioned a guy right there who, in my opinion – is, I, I don't know if you can call him a star in the future, but I think he's going to be a, an above-average NFL wide receiver, and that's Tyler Johnson, the rookie fifth-round pick from Minnesota uh, who, who made a huge impact on their team, made a great catch at Green Bay in a vital spot of the game in the fourth quarter, or in New Orleans, excuse me, and then at Green Bay, Who did Tom Brady throw the ball to just inside the two-minute warning when they needed to extend a drive and run out the clock against the Green Bay Packers? He threw it to Tyler Johnson, who was interfered with when when Kevin King grabbed his jersey or his T-shirt, whatever it was. But look look at what Tom Brady did on two huge calls, one in the divisional game, one in the championship game. He found Tyler Johnson. To me... It was reminiscent of him looking for Malcolm Mitchell and Chris Hogan in the Super Bowl win over Atlanta. Why is he throwing to them? Well, because I trust them. Tom Brady is not throwing the ball to anybody in a huge moment of a playoff game unless he trusts them. So I totally agree with you, Mike. 
I'm franchising Shaq Barrett. I'm trying to work out a long-term deal. And if you can get Godwin for below what he might make somewhere else, great. If not, sometimes you just have to say goodbye. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.